Hey there, everybody. I want to show you really quickly how you can um, analyze your data for the Heat of Reaction Lab. The first thing you have to do is download Logger Lite, which is a pro free program that you can access with the link that I provided um, in your Blackboard assignment. Um, so I just opened Logger Pro Lite, and then I'm going to open the files. You're going to get sent these um, actually by your lab instructor. Um, it's always going to give you this message. You should click OK. This just means you don't have a LabQuest probe attached to your computer, which is totally fine. OK, so here's the first experiment somebody did. And it's important to understand what's happening here. So just to recap from the video that you should watch, um, the first five minutes or so are just to get a stable temperature. And you, you notice this isn't exactly stable. Some of that is from the magnet inside of the cup mixing a little bit. Um, roughly. Sometimes the, the probes just vary a little bit over time. Every measurement does. So that's normal. And then at the five minute mark, we combine in the first experiment HCl and NaOH together. And in that case, the temperature rises pretty quickly. Okay. So the thing is, this point right here is not a good data point. That is probably from uh, when the students took the lid off to mix the two liquids together. The probe was in the air. So this is an air temperature. So if, um, if we were feeling lazy, you can do this. So here's one way to get your minimum and maximum temperatures. Oh, and then of course up here is your stable temperature um, at, at the high, right? And then eventually that starts to decrease. So this, this is our sort of maximum temperature up here. So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, in Logger Lite, you can go to Analyze and then Statistics. And this little box here, I know it's really small, but this little box here has the minimum temperature, which would be this one, the temperature of the air. Um, and it tells you what time that happened at. And the maximum temperature, which is somewhere up here, probably that one, I'm guessing. And that happened at six minutes. Okay, so you can get your minimum and maximum from the computer and mo normally that's okay if you don't have an air temperature that'll be fine in this particular situation there's a couple of ways to deal with this problem of having the air temperature so one thing you can do is just copy it into excel erase that data point and then use excel to get better precision because these gaps here are just way too big and that creates an issue. You can also, we know that the, the minimum we're trying to get rid of that's an issue is at the one at 5.50. So that's, that's this right here. So personally, I think the best way to handle a data point like that is to, is to copy it. So I just highlighted everything and I copy it. And then I'm just gonna go into Excel. And this allows me to manipulate the data a little bit easier. Um, there's not a way of removing that data point once it's out of the lab quest. So we have to do this. So it's okay to paste it there. So. This is my times. I'm going to add just a column so I know what is going on here. So this is my time in minutes, and this is my temperature, and that's degrees Celsius. As you can see, the LabQuest actually collects a lot more data points than it, or a lot more decimal points than it really um, should. So in reality, the best we can hope for is that we have um, maybe two decimal places. So we're going to go format cells and just make this look a little bit more reasonable. So if we click number, we can tell it two decimal places right there. Okay, so that's temperatures. One decimal place is probably the most precise we actually can get, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look in the instrument. So if we are gonna make a graph, we're gonna highlight that. We can go to insert. My Excel might look a little different than yours. I've customized it a little bit, but you can have the insert tab and then you're going to click scatter chart like this. All right. And so now this doesn't look very good right now. I'm going to make this bigger. 
so that you can see it. It doesn't look very good right now because we have all this white space. We don't need to start at zero. That happens because it's a default for a lot of um, industries, but not for ours because if you don't have data close to zero degrees or in, in this case, it's zero degrees, then you don't need to, to worry about it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, is come over here. It's being blocked by my window of myself. And my, my minimum is gonna be something like 20 and see what that looks like. Okay, so as you can see, this is the, this is the data point we didn't want. So what I do is go back to my data, find that 5.5 here, and I'm just gonna delete it. And I want them to shift up. And so then it'll update your chart like it never existed. You need more precision in order to get any, any kind of useful information because Excel doesn't do the same statistical analysis that LabQuest will do. So I'm gonna add some lines in here that make it a little easier for me to, to tell what temperature things are happening at, okay? So the guideline is if I, if I try to draw a line through here, um, I need to be able to read what temperature that's gonna be at, at least to one decimal place. If you can't, then you need to add more grid lines or adjust the interval. Right. So the first thing to do is try to make a line that kind of averages as much of this as you can and stretch it way out like this. Okay, I'm going to make that line a little bit bigger for you. And I'm going to make it red. So we're doing something like that. And we're going to do a similar thing. And I, to make those shapes, I'm just going to the insert tab and then shapes and the line. So to make the line for your maximum, you're going to kind of do the same thing. I don't like how high I put that. That doesn't look good. This is a more accurate way of determining um, what your minimum and maximum at the point of mixing were. So the problem that we had here with this dip that was occurring is because the, the temperature probe was not in the container when the two liquids were mixed, which means you can't tell what the actual increase in temperature is at that moment, okay? So what we do is called extrapolation. So you extrapolate your base temperature and you extrapolate your high temperature. And then you draw a line at the five minute mark, assuming that you mixed it at five minutes. Um, you might have to adjust that a little bit. All right, so our five minute mark. Oh, I need more marks. See, that's a problem. I can't tell where the five minute mark is. So I have to add on this axis, I have to add a little bit more precision. Oops, just putting in random lines everywhere, ignore that. So I'm gonna add some minor grid lines so I can tell better where the five minute mark is. You can also change those intervals. I don't like those intervals because they're kind of difficult to read. So if I format the minor grid lines, do that again, format axis actually, it'll let me pick what units I want. So if I wanted every one degree there in my majors, which I do, then I can just tell it to do that right there. Okay, so now I have a marking at five. Now I can insert my line and I'll be able to tell with pretty good certainty where that is, right? And you can see that the temperature was starting to go up at that phase, okay? So this vertical line represents um, the exact moment of mixing. And so what we wanna be able to do is essentially take, I'm just gonna make little circles. You don't need to do this part. This is just so I can show you what I'm talking about. We wanna take the temperature when these intersect. Um, hold on one second. I'm gonna make it so you can see this better. We wanna take the temperature where the two, the extrapolated line and your vertical line intersect at your maximum and the minimum and subtract those two things, right? And you need to be careful of the sign when you subtract. In this case, the temperature went up. I went from like 20, let's see, let's see if we can figure this out. Oh, a good trick to figuring this out is you can either print it so you can really kind of look at it better or you can zoom in down here, right? So I would record in my data table that my, my minimum temperature here at the five minute mark seems to average about, so here's 21, there's 22, so. Each interval is worth 0.4, I believe. So 21.4, 21.8, nope, that doesn't work. 20.2, 4, 6, 8. So each one is worth 0.2. So 
So that's 21.2.4.6. So it's somewhere between 21.6 and 21.8. And I don't think it's halfway. So I'm going to say like 21.65 in this case. And again, just like we learned in the first experiment, that last digit can vary from one person to another. Maybe you think it's 21.5. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to write this down because I'm not printing it out. I'm just kind of recording it here. So that's what I think my low is, 21.65, which is a bit different from the other one because the other one was 20.88 because of the temperature of the air. Um, heat capacity of air is, is lower than water, so it, it's going to be colder um, than the water. Normally it is anyway. So then at the top, you're going to make another estimate here, right? So this one crosses just above that line, and so that's 28.2.4. So it's somewhere between 28.4 and 28.6. Um, and you're always estimating that last digit. So uh, this window's getting in my way. The zoom window keeps blocking when I'm trying to type things. <laughs> okay. So my picture is in the way. So we said 28.4 up to 28.6. I think it's a lot, it's almost halfway, but not quite. So maybe you think it's 0.44. Maybe you think it's 0.43. Maybe you think it's 0.45. It's a, it's a judgment call. All right. So then to find out the overall change in temperature, you're just going to subtract the maximum in this case minus the minimum. If this was an endothermic reaction, your temperature goes down in that case. It's going to mean that you're going to have a negative change in temperature. So don't flip them. Don't always make the higher number first, okay? That's only going to be true if you have um, an increase in temperature, okay? So that's how I handle the data analysis for this. Again, if you don't have a weird blip in your data like this one, then what you're going to do is you can just use the maximum and minimum from Logger Pro. Part of your questions are going to be to compare that. So in other data sets, you don't get quite as clear of an increase. And so you're gonna compare, what do you get if, oh gosh, sorry, I'm just gonna throw things. What do you get in Logger Pro doing analyzed statistics versus what you get when you use um, Office, okay? Don't forget, you get a free copy of Office. The instructions for that are in Blackboard already, okay? So hopefully this helps you understand how to do the data analysis. You would, you would be including this graph. I didn't do, our normal, um, I didn't title it, I didn't add access labels, you should do those things. I did show you how to, to make sure your precision is on the right scale here. That's a very important feature, otherwise you can't claim that many decimal points. Okay, I hope that helps. If, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to, to me or your instructors.